Hey everyone, showtime. <laughs> Good to be with you. Happy Sunday. We are in an art gallery down on 30A, still in Florida. Um, and uh, we have not returned to Nashville yet, and uh, that's okay with us. <laughs> we have been uh, traveling and uh, enjoying uh, the, the, um, the sun out here. And um, let's see, where are we? It's March 14th, uh, which marks the one year anniversary of our last uh, uh, road show, really. I mean, we've played at uh, the venue in Key West twice now, um, and one show in Kansas. Uh, but our touring uh, ended on March 14th, 2020, when the pandemic uh, uh, started shutting things down and we played in Seattle, March 14th, yeah, and uh, uh, that was at the Triple Door in Seattle, uh, and that's when this whole thing was starting to really uh, become uh, frightening, and uh, last time I checked, our name's still on the marquee at the Triple Door. Really? They shut the venue wow. after our show. They closed it down. Their staff were crying. They didn't know when, where their work was going to come from. It was it was a it was a it was a scary and challenging time a year ago, um, and uh, and yet we've made it through, and uh, so have they. I hope. I'm sure everybody's had to pivot like we have, but we want to thank y'all for joining us every Sunday since then, doing this thing that we do. Today's guest is Leslie Satcher, and she's on standby in her green room in Nashville, well, Franklin, Tennessee. Uh, you're going to love Leslie if you haven't heard her song. She's an incredible singer-songwriter, an amazing artist with a deep, 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 deep groove. Uh, we like yeah. writing with her, <laughs> and we like hanging with her, so you're going to love her. Michaela Gazich is with us again, of course, from outside Venice, Italy, um, and... Uh, I need to straight up thank the folks here uh, at Foster Gallery for letting us broadcast. Um, we're on Grand Boulevard at Foster Gallery and uh, the good folks of 30A Cultural Arts Alliance of Walton County have, uh, have uh, agreed to let us do it here because they have good internet uh, and because they're friends to artists. Uh, every year in January they have the 30A Songwriters Festival and we play down here been doing it for I don't know a decade or so I don't know how many years a lot of I've years done it, twice. it was real small <laughs> when we started and uh, it's real big now so I don't know time anymore I've lost time I've lost track of time I celebrated my birthday this week I turned 59 on March 11th uh, so that's one bit of time that I do keep up with the rest of it's a freaking blur I don't know what you know, you have to tell me. I don't even know anymore. What you got there? Kim Dyer commented. She goes, I missed the flag. We didn't think this is the first show we've ever done without the flag. That's the truth. I can't bring, I can't, I can't hang stuff in an art gallery just no. yet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just yet. Yeah, you know, the books are out. Maybe I'll start painting now. I don't know. Um, I really, uh, I really don't. Uh, I don't. I don't even know how to say how to say what what about that. It's just so strange to uh, to be able to do this from different places and be received so well by so many yeah. really kind, generous people. Uh, it's a it's a it's a nice thing to be uh, in the arms of people who uh, are appreciative of the arts and artists. Uh, so I wouldn't march a flag in and hang it up here. It would be kind of rude. Um, what else we got? I thought that was a great observation, though. That is true. This is our first show without the flag, but we, we stand by our flag. We just don't want to stand it up. Just today's not the right time. Um, what else we got? Anything else I need to say before we start playing some music? Yeah. I'm real excited to hear Leslie. Me too. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's play a couple and get Leslie Satcher into this stream. Y'all are going to love her. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, right now I think the Grammys are uh, the pre-telecast is on. We have a lot of friends nominated Every, this year. We have a lot of friends nominated this year. Betty Levette, Ruthie, Ruthie Foster, Foster. Yeah. Uh, Courtney Marie Andrews. So many That's of our right, friends. Yeah. We wish all of our friends uh, good luck at the Grammys. Uh, and uh, uh, may uh, 
may everyone uh, uh, enjoy the nomination because that's really what it's about is the, the ride of being nominated. Your resume changes the day you get nominated. It always say Grammy nominated, fill in the name. Uh, and that is probably uh, uh, something that uh, I will never forget having been nominated once. I mean, that's going to be in my obituary, don't you think? <laughs> she doesn't like to think about that. <laughs> Changed my Wikipedia page. How about that? Highway 90 westbound In the falling dark Rolling past cornfields Catfish farms and swamps A Pascagoula sunset Longing, breaking through Don't know why I'm always leaving Don't know why I left you Won't you meet me in the meadow We can look up at the stars Lean to the wind, dream again, find out who we are. Won't you meet me in the meadow? No more alone. We could lay down in the grass. Till the feelings pass Then go So much to tell you Babe, I'm ready to come clean I'm so tired of running From things I cannot leave You and me and Mississippi Battled, beautiful, and scarred In need of forgiveness And the awful grace of God Won't you meet me in the meadow? We can look up at the stars lean into the wind dream again find out who we are won't you meet me in the meadow no more
Yeah, then go home. Inspired by the Odie Lindsay book, Some Go Home. Odie was our guest not too long ago. Oh my gosh, that was so great. Yeah, Odie's amazing. Odie's amazing. We're thinking about bringing more authors on. I'm such a fan of, uh, of writers, of all writers. And uh, we do have Margaret Wrinkle coming. You might know her work. She's a, a beautiful nature writer and a New York Times columnist. Uh, she writes opinion pieces. Most of them are on uh, nature. But she's based in Nashville and writes about Nashville, which is very, very cool. And uh, who else is coming up? Uh, ben Glover will be on yeah, with us ben again. Yeah, next week. Yeah, John he was Hyatt's. our very first guest. Yeah, he was our very first guest. Yeah. yeah, having him back would be a full full circle. And then we'll have an in-person show with Sam Baker. That's we'll, right. We are all going to be in the same room. That's again. right. That's we'll wild. have an in-person show from Austin, Texas in two weeks? Three weeks? Two weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks. Uh, Sam will be with us in the hotel room from Austin. Uh, we'll be down there, and Jamie will be making a new record. And uh, Sam will, will be able to join us. Uh, we'll do a little songwriter circle that day. That'll be cool, right? Hopefully the internet will be strong enough in the hotel and everything will go great. If not, I'll call it Bonnie, so she'll get us her house. If not, Jamie will <laughs> fix it somehow, miraculously. We got right there. We'll figure it out. <laughs> well, I stared out of the windshield.
Guitar Harris, <laughs> picking them, picking them by the dozens. <laughs> Your solo work has been incredible. I, I love to tell folks because it's true. She never played solos until the pandemic. This is astonishing, really. Willie Nelson gives me confidence. It's astonishing how fast she uh, has been able to to jump into uh, to play and lead guitar quite quite competently. You're you're a natural. Oh, it makes her nervous. I, I think, feel nervous. I know. I feel nervous. I think you're uh, really, nervous. really good at it. Thank I, you. You know, it's it, it's a uh, um, it's a skill I'll, I'll never have. I don't. I can't do it. It feels like math to me. Uh, but you ha or have the ability to see the patterns, I guess, or or I don't know. What do you think? I, I know your fingers are are are, are, are long, and that helps. Um, what do you think it is that makes it work? Huh? I don't know. I think it's like. I mean, I honestly wish that I knew more than I did. And, and I'm trying, you know, I'm taking lessons, I'm trying to learn, but I'm still like an ear person, you know? But I remember, I just think about the, the like solos that I like, you know, like Willie Nelson, Tom Petty, Lindsey Buckingham. They're like one very note simple, solos, a lot one of them. note yeah. solos that's not about, you know, look at me like shredding like a metal player up and down the neck, which I also like, but you know, it's, it's like a different thing. It's about feeling. creating feeling, yeah. yeah. So. That's what I'm just aiming for. And melody, I think, somewhere near the melody. But I, I am uh, working to understand more about it. I have very little understanding of, the, of how it actually works, but I'm just trusting my ear. Well, your heart knows how it works. That's the thing. Songs are what feelings <laughs> sound like. That's what I say when I teach, uh, is that uh, our goal as songwriters is to convey emotion. And that uh, is being done very successfully by your leads. Thank you. So Mike Campbell, I should also throw in Mike Campbell, of course, that's, a, that's in the Tom Petty realm. Absolutely. It would be a shame not to say, say the name. Say to, the name. Say to, the name. <laughs> Let's bring Leslie Yay. Satcher into Great. the conversation. I'm excited. And uh, oh my hey goodness, God. there you are. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Jamie, that was an awesome solo. I was like, what is she doing? Thank you. It sounded yeah. great. I here. love how you play. I, I was, Aww. you know, I have to say, I after spending all that time with you, whatever, two years ago maybe, and watching how you play, I was like, man, I, I want to like groove some more. I want to learn how to. I want to learn the instrument better. So you're a huge inspiration for me in that regard. You know, I'm I'm kind of like Mary. I don't understand how that whole solo stuff works. I never took any lessons. I had about half a year in school when I was a kid, and I learned the, like three or four chords, and I was really tearing those to bits when I got to Nashville and not able to even really do that. And I, I told somebody I wanted to, and Jamie will love this because he's a Texas boy. I said, I want to know how Mickey Newberry gets that sound in his songs. Mm -hmm. And they said, um, oh, you got to have drop D. You got to drop the D string there. And I was like, what's that? So somebody showed me that and I was like, holy cow, career. I could make chords with one finger, <laughs> career. And then my career went to the next level when Emory Gordy Jr., who, as you know, was a great bass player and married to Patty Loves, produced all those great records, um, played bass for Elvis. He, I was writing with him one day and he had just, uh, Patty had just done that thing on, you remember that movie, uh, Guys, The Apostle, that Robert Duvall starred in? I do remember oh, that movie. Yeah. Oh. Patty had a song in it called Two Coats. Two coats laid it for me, and on and on. And he had that whole thing going, and I was like, I was over at his house right with him, and he was very deadpan, Emory Gordy. He never, he was very level, you know, never talks up or down, just right here. I said, Emory, how'd you get that sound on that song? And he goes, Dad Gad. And I went, What's that? And he showed me how to tune my guitar to Dad Gad, and I've never changed it since. So that took me to a whole oh, yeah. different place, and just uh, the alternate tunings really helped me a lot. I said all that to say that. And I love you guys. How are you? 
Oh, we love you too. We oh, love you too. Your sister cried all the way home. It's burned to my brain now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Singing that for days. Really great. Oh my goodness. So we're Gosh. we feel like we feel like this is sort of a a reunion since the three of us have spent mm -hmm. a good amount of time together writing songs, you know, and, and songs Lafayette, and Lafayette. At the, yeah, at the, the, what do they call it? The last Solo Songwriters Festival. South Louisiana right. Songwriters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. It was the first well, time we got to really hang out together. You're, you're a really fast songwriter, in my opinion. You, you, once mm -hmm. you have an idea, you can execute it quickly. You're, you're really good at that. Well, is, is that believe, something you learned over time, or is that just how you write? At first, it was a, it was a hindrance for me, Mary, because I would write so fast, I wouldn't stop to craft. I wouldn't stop to really, you know, fine tune. And as I started studying great writers like yourself and uh, uh, Mickey Newberry, um, you know, just amazing writers, I would just start honing in. You know, Nancy Griffith. I'd listen to her song, Steve Earle. I'd listen to Lucinda Williams. Um, and then I would move into the country writers and listen to Bob McDill and those guys, and I would go, okay, how can I apply what I do, my, my speed that, that God gives me because the songs come so fast, I believe from God. i got to slow down enough to be able to craft them and knock the edges off and make them, you know, worthy. And so um, once I started learning to do that, then I really was able to go to the next level as a songwriter. But the, it, it took studying with the greats. The, the you know if you think of it as sort of folders opening like a computer folder your your folder opens and you can write that thing as quick as anybody I've never seen anybody write faster and it's it's it's, it's on point uh, I'm meander I can take I can take weeks to get what you can do in 20 minutes it's it's uh, Mary. you just focus and know how to execute a great title you you give you a title it's done it's amazing oh. how <laughs> thank you I, I'm like I'm, a Jack Russell, I guess. <laughs> Get it. Well, you, you maybe they're good at what they do too. But I, I'm just blown away by by how how um, you can narrow. You you have a great focus. It's it's a Thank gift. You. Thank you. I'll tell you, Mary um, and Jamie. I was when I started writing with professional writers in my at the beginning of my career. I really was blessed to be able to write with really great co-writers who were who were able to help me sort of learn like I said to kind of knock the edges off and stuff but then I, w I was really um so excited when I started hanging around I, I wrote I've written a, a lot of songs with Jim Lauderdale and when I started writing with Jim one of the things that happened to me was all of the boundaries were taken off about what you could write about if you say to Jim let's write about that that bench over there. There is a bench, dark and lonely. <laughs> there ain't nobody on. I mean, he will jump on it, and I was like, he, he can do it. Write anything. Can when he I was a do kid, it. I don't, I don't know if you guys remember that show that Mac Davis used to have when we were, I do. When we were kids. He'd make do up a remember? song on the spot. Yep. He would make it up on the spot. And one time I was about, we were, we would have been, because I'll be fifty nine in July. I'll be fifty eight in July, I think. I'm not sure which one, one of those two. Fifty nine, I think. Um, <laughs> I saw him make up a song about a fork. A lady yelled out. She goes, write a song about a fork. And he whipped that bad boy out. And I was like, that caught my ear. That and the Red-Headed Stranger album. And when I got mm. those two things locked in together, I was like, hey, what's this business? And I didn't really know you could be a professional songwriter. I, I just came here to be a singer. But um, thankfully, some people were, you know, smart enough to go, hey, <laughs> here's how you can make a living, too. So I thought that was a good thing. Uh, well, I think we could talk for hours, but I know everyone, including Jamie and I, want to hear you sing. Would you play oh, two songs you. for us? I sure will. You know, your careers get kicked off with certain songs, and this song was recorded by, um, by Leanne Womack on her first record and produced by great producer Mark Wright. Now, Leanne did a little different than me. <laughs> But my granddaddy is, we call him Big Daddy. And it's for Jamie because she's from Texas too. Texas girls. Now he been gone for ten long days. Burning up at any stage. Now he gotta run from coast to coast. I got Baby, make 
Leanne Womack. She is sweetie. Um, I can't see y'all, so I'm just thinking you want me to do another one right now, so that's what I'm going to do. I was working on this before I came over here, because uh, when you're, let me just tell y'all that are tuned in, when you are working with Mary Gaucher, and you're a songwriter, and you're close to her, Jamie will tell you this, uh, you want to put out your best, because she raises the bar on us because she is the best. And so um, I was trying to think, I was digging through stuff. I was going, man, i got to have something great to take to Mary and Jamie today. And this is a brand new song. Uh, just uh, We had started it a little while back and didn't finish it, but I wrote it with the great Pat McLaughlin. And so Pat is, um, uh, uh, can, you, can, you, can you make that back like it was, baby? Um, I'm talking to my husband. <laughs> He's running sound. That sounded good. It, it, I, it, how it was was really great. Um, anyway, Pat and I wrote this song, and we hadn't finished it. And I'm working on some new special projects, which I'll tell y'all about. And he came swinging around one day, and he goes, "How about that song we never finished? Let's finish that song." And we sat down and finished it, and it it was an amazing afternoon. And um, this is what we came out with. It's called. Uh, well, I, I won't tell you so you so you won't have a good time with it. Can you put that back like it was, baby? Big cars ain't coming back. Cheap gas ain't coming back. Elvis ain't coming. So don't worry yourself about that Long letters ain't coming back So the postman ain't coming back Oh, hitchhikers ain't coming back A little worried about laundromats And old cowboys like my daddy No, they ain't coming back And long Sunday afternoons Where there was time Those fights ain't coming back 
You can believe me when I tell you that The whiskey ain't coming back And my sanity's coming back And my heart is coming back How I got back on track well, I'd love to tell you about that But old phones that don't show who's calling No, they ain't coming back You still can't forgive that brings a chill oh but maybe someday baby you will mm. that girl that you saw last with her hand wrapped around if she ain't coming back, maybe you will. <laughs> Great Pat McLaughlin. Make us cry in the art gallery. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> don't you love Pat? Do you know Pat? I do. I've written with him several times. John Prine loved writing with Pat McLaughlin. Yes, loved him. He wrote his last song with Pat. Mm -hmm. Pat the was one dear that to we him. know anyway. The, the, uh, the as the last song. Yeah, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous song. That's Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. when you hear Pat render it too, you just your your heart just cracks. But um, I also think it's an interesting song for a girl to sing. You know, that I girl agree. that you saw last with her hand wrapped around the glass, if she ain't coming back, maybe you will. I mean, you don't hear that very that perspective very often about a girl who's caught up in that. I think that's kind of might be kind of a cool take on it. It's powerful. It works both ways, but the, the more interesting way is the girl because, it's, like you said, it's we don't hear it, that point of view very often. Getting the a song. girl to sing that might be kind of hard. <laughs> It's hard. They don't stretch out too much. Not in today's so. marketplace, in today's but market. that's all right. You sing it. Thank yeah. you. I will. I will. <laughs> Thank you. We'll bring you back in a couple minutes. We want to hear about your new business venture, which sounds extremely exciting um, and um, just uh, a wide open space for creative people. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be back shortly. I'm going to give Jamie a song, bring me Kayla in, give him a song. We'll be right back to you. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we're still in release cycle at our house. Jamie's put a record out uh, Friday, was it? I believe so. We go Friday, and uh, uh, there's just been a whole lot of going to the post office. want to thank y'all for ordering <laughs> yeah, the CDs. Uh, she's been signing them and sending them, signing them and sending them from various towns and uh, coastal communities where we seem to be hanging out. Did you want to play something? What, what would you like to play? I was thinking that I was going to play this. Cause we no, I'll play that. something from, uh, uh, no, no, okay. You want to play this? <laughs> it's all right, I already. Um, I thought we was going to uh, have you play a couple. Oh, sure. Yeah. All right. No problem. Yeah. This is from the Congress House Sessions.
Yes, yes, yes. Snow White Knuckles. <laughs> Thanks, Crochet. <Gaucher. laughs> and that was uh, from the brand new Congress House Sessions. Uh, Jamie Harris, Rickard, just out Friday. And, um, oh my goodness, she's signing them and sending them. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. Uh, and I'm going in to make a new record, what, in like two weeks. So We're going to Austin, every, Texas in two weeks yeah. and uh, back to the Congress House with Mark Hallman. And Jamie will be recording. And I'll be at the hotel uh, doing what? Working on the next book, probably. And uh, hanging out with our friend Sam Baker. Yeah. Eating tacos. Texas tacos. <laughs> Red corn tortillas. Red corn tortillas. <laughs> Got me an apartment on the east side, 1411, 13th Street. Walk on the tracks by the Cumberland River over the bridge. Past lovers leave. I'm moving on through the pain, through the pain. Wait. Another train 
Jackie called me in that thrift store in Camden Town behind the stage. You wrapped your arms round me, you built me up. You tore me down. December sun I see my bread disappear in the cold winter night. Bones gather in the river by the river, whistle blows a lonesome cry. happening in Italy, shall we? How's uh, the maestro doing? He's uh, not here. He's Where'd he go? I don't know. He's always here. Uh oh. We'll see. Well, let's go back to, uh, let's go back to, to Tennessee. Wait, he's, he's here. We're okay. Is he here? here? It's there he is. I'm here. Jamie Guitar Harris. It's, uh, <laughs> every Sunday, it's better. Yeah. yeah wow. That's I can't wait to to play uh, some duos uh, on Mary's song with you, guitar and violin. I can't wait. Uh, I envision a different show. <laughs> yeah, can be interesting. Mm. Really interesting. Mm. It, it, I, it I, I was be, thinking it about that. Be. It will be. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, we've got a band now. <laughs> yes, it's a band. It's a band. <laughs> uh, well. How have you been this week, my friend? Have you been hanging out? Um, you guys are shut down in Italy, right? Yes, yes. It's a shutdown again. So I was always um, in this room, almost <laughs> uh, writing and uh, thinking. I'm still waiting uh, to be vaccinated. And this, I don't know when it will happen because it's uh, really slow here in, uh, in Italy and in Europe. So um, it's better to, to stay to stay at home and uh, uh, away for the future. And uh, so I'm here. <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's it. And it's a good chance uh, to write and, and to read all, all the books that I collected on the road. <laughs> so uh, now <laughs> I have too. time to do it. Yeah, we're doing yes. the same thing. Me too. All 
all the ones that are in the pile of books I've been buying and buying and buying and never mm -hmm. had a chance to slow down and read. We're working our way through the pile. We really are. Yes, <laughs> yes, funny. yes. Me too, me too. And, and I'm doing uh, um, things that uh, I was never thinking to do. I put uh, my books uh, and my CDs in order, in alphabetical order and this thing. So uh, I have time to do weird things. So that's the situation. Uh, anyway, uh, this week it was uh, your birthday, Mary. So happy birthday again. Thank you, my friend. And uh, it was also the birthday of one of our greatest friend and fan, Bruno. On the on the 13 two days after you was Bruno's birthday. Is so that... happy birthday, so, Bruno. Bruno! Happy birthday. happy birthday, Bruno. Happy birthday, Mary. So uh, my idea was uh, uh, today uh, to play on, on my violin uh, your uh, signature song, Mercy Now, to celebrate your oh, birthday wow. and uh, Bruno's birthday. So this Thank is you. my idea. I'm ready for that, if you are ready. I'm ready. Thank you, my Michael. Happy birthday, Mary. Happy birthday, Bruno.
Wow. Happy birthday. <laughs> wow. Can't wait to listen. play the song again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna listen to that again on the replay. That's wild. That turns it into a whole other thing. That's beautiful. It's a hymn, as you know. And so I played it like a um, traditional hymn in some way, uh, something from the public domain. It, it, there is, a, I love also the the melody. It's, um, I love it. I love it. So I try to go in in the dimension where I am when I when I play it uh, with you. You you uh, gave me this. Uh, you you brought me there. So <laughs> it's you. <laughs> oh my God! Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Mary. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, happy birthday again. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. You know how we both feel about our birthday. I know that. I didn't want uh, to say this uh, to, our, <laughs> to, our, to, our, to our audience. But, uh, so, but now uh, I can tell them. So uh, this week I called Mary because I, I know about this. And uh, Mary, like me, don't like so much to celebrate the birthday. And so we tried to we try to survive this day and and usually i call mary and mary calls me for my birthday so that's a uh, i say okay i know so come on you survive something like that <laughs> get through it get through it. my friend beth get said, through it but breath said mary you know what another name for your birthday is i said no what she said thursday i said you know what that is actually helpful <laughs> that is helpful <laughs> that's great that's great right? <laughs> gonna think about uh, that uh, well good to see you my friend thank you for the beautiful beautiful music and uh thank you man in there just weeks go by and weeks go by and uh weeks go by weeks go by and uh, you're gonna get that vaccine and this thing's gonna open up for you it's just we'll see when that's it might be summer but that's we can see we're gonna see from here we can see it we, from here. Yeah. We, we're going to see. It's uh, something that uh, I was never thinking to be uh, uh, doing this show with you one year after. This is something <laughs> that really I I wasn't thinking about one year ago. My God. Uh, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Art, here we are. In, a, in an art gallery somewhere in 30A. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you always, always, always for your kindness and for your... Uh, Generous thank spirit. You. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Mary. And thank you, Jamie, for your music and for your help every Sunday. Ciao. <laughs> ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. ciao, ciao. ciao. Let's, go, let's, go back to, um, let's go back to Tennessee and see how Leslie's doing over there. Wow. So that Fold was the maestro. That. He's amazing. <laughs> oh, that was cutting incredible. through my heart. <laughs> he's yeah, he's incredible. He plays the viola, too, and the piano. He's He's, we've been together, I guess, 15 years or so on the road. He's just wonderful. He's amazing. How did, how did you find him? How'd you meet? Found him in Italy. I was on a tour very early when I first started touring Europe, and he was playing with the guy who, uh, who opened the show for me, Andrea Parodi, who's now actually booking the shows for us in Italy. Uh, and uh, he, uh, I asked him to join me for a song, and and it went so well i just told him to stay and he just played the whole show with me <laughs> and, it's all uh, meant to be right there <laughs> it just fit yeah he's got that heart of gold i just felt him that's you know awesome. That's yeah awesome. yeah so tell us you've got a new business venture that uh, has Gosh. launched girls we have been locked down too like everybody else and so we got our new office which is behind me the day about the week after the whole lockdown thing started and it, um, as you know, Mary, it used to be the Americana Music Association offices, and it was had, had been sitting, you know, kind of un, undone for about a year or so, and no one in it, and it needed a lot of TLC, so we just started working on it and building our business, which we just launched on Friday um, worldwide, and it is called Pod Plays. It is um, an app that's available on your phone in the App Store or in um, Google Play. You just, it's one word, Pod Plays, P-O-D-P-L-A-Y-S. It's audio dramas with original music embedded in it um, uh, by Nashville hit songwriters. And um, it, it's, it's sort of like Netflix for your ears. 
it's all family friendly, all faith based, and um, we are so excited about it. We launched our first three plays on Friday, and you can access them by you know putting the phone. It's free to put it on your phone. Free, just go to the app store and find it. Five plays. And um, you can listen to the first three. I wrote the second one called The Beehive, Mary. I'd never written a screenplay. And I was, you know, you told me about writing books earlier. You said you had never written a book, and you just sat down and started doing it. Well, I looked at these screenplays that we were using um, and that we were recording our first plays with, and I thought, you know, I can, I think I can do that. Songwriters write. We're writers. You know, so I just changed the format and started writing plays. And, oh, my gosh, Mary, it's like, it's amazing. It's so much fun. So we, uh, our other writers that we signed, um, a, real, a great hit writer named Corey Batten, he's done the same thing. One of the plays that we launched, he wrote. Uh, we're all acting in them. It's sort of like a little second city group. You know, we have this little six or seven of us that were acting in all the plays and pulled my mom in and my sister in. And everybody, you know, my neighbors came over and read a little part. So we've had a lot of fun, and we, we launched it on Friday, and um, it's going to be a wonderful thing. The best thing about it, one of the best things, Mary, is we're one of the first companies in the world to have um, a little uh, emblem on our on our website that once you access it, there's a little man in the corner you can touch. If you're a blind, if you're visually impaired, you can touch that and you can maneuver our website through your braille keyboard. So you can look at all the content that we have, you can choose what you want to listen to, you can hear the background on the actors and different things that we're gonna have as we, as we continue to add content every week. Um, so the blind community, um, is a huge community worldwide and it will be um one of the first entertainment companies in the world to service them it's that's very exciting. fantastic wow, that's, that's yeah. fantastic it's a fun thing we've been able to write what we you know we're writing songs that fit in the plays in certain scenes but they can also stand alone so if you don't hear the play and you hear the song you'll just think oh I like that song and we're also you know still pitching songs in nashville to artists and stuff um but each one of us that you know, writes the song and performs it inside the play. Then, when the play launches, that song launches as a single, basically to to on online. And um, it's it's an exciting. It's the Wild West, Mary. <laughs> and we've got a horse. Well, I can't we're wait excited. to um, when <laughs> we, we get in wagon. the car and start when we get in the car and start driving. We're going to listen and and see what uh, I want. You got to experience it, I think, to fully understand. Uh, yes. Uh, the 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 um, I guess it the sounds concept. like a. Um, uh, sort of a, a new thing that uh, it, the, it's it, like a vignette and there's songs in it and yes and you, yes you, you, you know it kind of if you kind of imagine old time radio shows sort yes of that's like what I was that. thinking of like like the original old time yes. Opry sort of like they that would, only with songs embedded in it every 10 minutes or so and so um, and at the end if you like the music it's available for you to download to your devices boom you can you have a new EP right then if, uh, you know, five songs or whatever, or you can buy them individually if you like. But um, it's a fun thing. That's so cool. Um, we, are the songs going to be produced? Or are they uh, uh, acoustic uh, sort of uh, vocal guitar thing? They're, they're produced. All of our writers are writer producers, and then I've recorded some in the studio. Uh, some we, you know, some are very stripped down, but they are very. They're not demos. They are they are produced records. Mastered so, tracks that are that are high yes. quality. Fantastic. very high quality and it's an exciting exciting new format it was it's an idea that god in heaven just downloaded to my husband and he came in from the cowboy parlor out in the out, out at our house he had been out there and he came in he goes i have an idea and you could see the light bulb floating over his head and uh, he worked on it he he's a he's a real brain and he worked on it for months and months and months before he we we presented it to the people that we're working with to say you know do you this we think this will work and we think this is a new way to present new and original music and they were like we love it and so we just we were off and running that fast well we need stories i mean we just we, oh. the human animal needs stories and if you add music to the stories it just makes the story better in some ways that's it just sure natural it sure yeah. does wow hmm? Oh, my husband's saying, listen to the Beehive. The second story, uh, well, the second play in this, it's called The Beehive, and I wrote it about, uh, and you girls are from the South, so you know this, you know the beauty shop. You know when you're sitting in there. Oh, yeah. All you know about it. Everyone's about talking beehive. and what's going on. Well, listen, tune into The Beehive because I wrote it about an, an event where, um, I'll just say this, a stranger comes into this small town beauty shop and the girls just, you know, they're, they're so beside themselves until they get it out of her, what she's doing in their town. And um, I wrote it. Uh, my mother was born in Honey Grove, Texas, which is right outside Paris, Texas, where I'm from. 
And um, the little beauty shop there used to be owned by my aunt. And so I grew up in that beauty shop listening to those women. And uh, when I wrote this and all the stuff, the women, some of the women at home have called, called me and they're like, is that me in the beehive? That's the, what we call this. That's what I call it. Oh, the they want to know. Yeah, you're talking yeah like about the beehive hairdo. Is that me? And I just tell them, yes, it sure is. It sure is. So anyways, you'll, you'll recognize these girls from the South. And it's very, um, people have told me it's sort of, sort of steel magnolia-ish a little bit. But I think it's. Might, might be a little funnier because I was aiming for that, for it to be more oh, funny content. We're going to so. listen to it as soon as you get in the, in the car and start I, driving. I hope you guys enjoy it. And on the, uh, Mary, if uh, as you're, you're, the folks who are watching or tuned in, as, if, as you download the app and you listen to the plays, there's an option for you at the end to tell us what you think about it. And do you like this content? Would you like more content like this? What would you like to hear more of? Um, the one thing that we have, the main umbrella that we have over all our content is that it is family friendly. You can put it in in Florida and your kids can listen to it all the way to California. So that's what we really, really wanted to do. And, and or, you know, that is the, the umbrella over everything that we have done. So that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, Dave says you can press the microphone on it and send us a voice message. So you can interact with us, and we love that, you know. So it's a, oh, it's a man, brave he's new He's thought world. of everything. Wow. He has. He's a little <laughs> brainiac. I told him, I said, man, if I'd known you could do all this stuff, we'd done this five years ago. But everything has a perfect timing, as you all know. And I think, you know, a, a lot of very dreadful things have happened during lockdown. But a lot of wonderful things have happened where people have been able to I feel like, and I think you girls might feel the same way because I can tell it by the looks on your faces, it feels sort of like a reset, like you've just kind of got got your needle back in the middle of the where it's supposed to be and, and sort of like shut out all this stuff that, you know, we're, we're all running a race in the music business so fast to get somewhere. Well, when you're forced to stop and sit down, well, gosh, then you start realizing, man, I can write, I can sing, I can play, I can, I can do a podcast, I can um, make records. I mean, everything... Everything doesn't have to be dictated by someone else. You can you can start with yourself and, and walk, walk your own journey. And I think that's what the COVID thing has kind of, the shutdown has, it's done for me. I can say that for me. I love that. Yeah, it's given us time to reflect and, uh, mm -hmm. and to ponder and to, to say, well, well this, this was working, but this wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we'll see what it's going to be like once... Uh, once everything starts returning, but for for us, I think we feel that there's things we we definitely want to pursue uh, and things we just don't want to do anymore. Uh, and I, you know, I finished the book and I love long form writing. Like you're, you're defining with your plays on, on the podcast, it's fun to write in other formats. And yes, and uh, so we'll see. And no constraints. But, yeah, yeah, like three and a half minute, <laughs> right? Four and a half minutes. That's it. Um, you know, right. Mary, one time I was at a party um, at Beth Nielsen Chapman's house and Rodney Crowell came in and we were standing there talking and I asked him, you know, what you been up to, Rodney? And he said, oh, I just finished a book. And I said, oh, that must be so exciting. He said, you know what I found out? He goes, when I get tired of writing songs and having to just keep everything three minutes, I start writing books. And when I get tired of having to explain myself for pages and pages, I'll go back to writing songs. He said he switches back and forth <laughs> like that. It's like a relief valve on each one. I thought, what a great way to put it, you know? <laughs> Wow. He writes great books and great songs. So He sure as heck does. He sure as heck does. Well, give us some music, my friend. Play a I'll couple more, from, would you? Sure will. This is from a, a play that has not launched yet. It's going to here pretty quick. Like, just finished recording all the parts for it. And um, it's starring um, the wonderful Scott Reeves, who was a big star on uh, General Hospital for years and years. He's an amazing writer and singer. He was in a band called Blue County, a duet. He came and read the part of Preacher in this play. It's a little play called Preacher and Jake. It's coming out soon. It's one of the songs I wrote for it. There's a preacher man. There's a preacher man. Always talking about Jesus and the blood of the Lamb. I don't wear no diamond ring. Don't drive no fancy car. How the preacher man wants is a sinner man's heart. Church house. 
house down on his knees. Preacher man don't care what the other folk think. They say he leaves the door unlocked for those who would come in. And he's a keeping a watch for the one who's lost. Hey, preacher man. Everybody's asking awesome. about your guitar. <laughs> All about my guitar? They, wa they want to know. Well, this is an amazing gift that I was just given uh, a couple years ago. It's a Stromberg, and it's um, it's a Korean-made guitar, but they made them. Uh, it's a three. It's a 335 knockoff, a Gibson 335 knockoff. But and as soon as they started coming out, and people started loving them. Uh, Gibson went, no, no, <laughs> that's our 335. You guys could quit making that. So they only made them for a year, so they're rare. And I was down in Palm Beach a couple of years ago uh, working my blues record, which um, uh, is uh, Leslie Satcher and the Electric Honey Badgers, made it about three years ago. And um, I played this guitar on stage, and the gentleman down there, a good friend of mine, Ron Harbison, he had this guitar, and he had a lot of work done on it. He put double humbuckers on it. Did a lot of work on the in, inside of it that's not standard with the when it, the way it comes. And I, I was uh, playing it two years in a row when I went down there to do that show in Palm Beach. And the second year I was getting ready to leave, he goes, Leslie, he said, um, I never play that guitar. He said, you love it, and it loves you. He said, you just take it home with you. And I said, yes, sir, thank you. I normally don't do that, Mary. <laughs> normally I would have fought him, but I didn't that day. I was like, nope, I'll take it. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And I, I have uh, played it ever since. And... Um, I call it Ronnie. It really Thanks suits you. Thank you. It's Ron well, really Ronnie like suits it. you. I like it, Ronnie. It, it and fits it fits what you do really well. It's got a thank you. fine funky sound. It just thank sounds you. like swamp. <laughs> uh Mary, do you know uh, uh oh yeah, uh, my husband was saying to tell you that and the guitar people out there that I literally plug it straight in. There's no effects on it. I don't plug it Is through that it doesn't go through. Really? It's plugged straight into the board, and that's what I do. When I play it out, I play it straight into the house. I, 
No amp, nothing. That's just the way it goes, straight out. And I, <laughs> I think of it. all those boys in those skinny black jeans with five thousand mm -hmm. dollars worth of pedals who don't mm -hmm. sound as good as that. Straight into Thank the you. board. <laughs> Thank you. Hey Mary, you know you know Glenn Wharf, the great bass player. Glenn Wharf. I do know Glenn Wharf, yes. Glenn is an old friend of mine and one time he came to play for me in a session. It was the first time we'd ever hired him and or could even get him. And because uh, he's always, you know, big, uh, you know, he was playing on albums, but he he had, he came in to play on the session, and we were had we were so upset. We were over at station with, or at uh, Island Bound, my producer Luke Wooten, and because his gear hadn't arrived, we were like, oh no, oh no, it's time for the session. And Glenn's gear isn't here, and he walked in. He had a bass on his back, and he had a cord in his hand, and a uh, and a tuner, and we were like, dude, we're so sorry, your gear's not here. And he goes, no, I, I got it, and we were like, what? And he goes. It's in these, baby, not in the gear. <laughs> he plugged straight in with that bass and wore it out. We were like, oh, my gosh. You know, we'd had bass players coming in with huge rigs and all kinds of stuff, you know. No, he just plugged straight in and went to playing. We were like, there you go. It's in the fingers. Put Guitar Center fingers. out of business, man. Well, you, <laughs> you know don't what? need all you that did. stuff. Not everybody's Glenn <laughs> Wharf, though, bless them. <laughs> so There's a lot of one, great players. Right? Only yeah, one Glenn Wharf, so. There's Only one. one. Oh man, give us another one, would you? I sure will. Sure will. Let me think. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm on this tuning right here. I'll do this right here for you, for Jamie. She's a Willie Nelson fan like me. She's a good Texas girl like me. Wrote this for Willie Nelson and um, with my friend who said one Friday he said, uh, if you could write a song for anybody, who would it be? And I said Willie Nelson. He said, we can't get a record. We can't get a song to Willie Nelson. I said, oh, yes, we can. I was making my first record for Warner Brothers, and um, Mickey Raphael, the great harmonica player, Mickey Raphael, tours with Willie. And now he's with Willie and Chris Stapleton, son. He was playing on my record. And I said, we'll write the song, and we'll get it to Mickey. And maybe he'll take it to Willie. And that's exactly what happened. And it, he was uh, very kind to me to take this song. Uh, Willie recorded it in one pass at Ocean Way Studio in the middle of the night one night out in L.A. And a week later they had Bonnie Ray come in and sing the harmony on it. So, what a gift. What do you do with the sands of time When they carve out lines around your eyes You can close your fist up good and but you can't hold back the sands of time And what do you do with a memory That just hangs around and stares at me I could tear that frame down off the wall But I can't erase the things I saw Oh, night and day Night and day You remain You remain There's a box full underneath my bed Just close enough not to forget What do you do with the old regrets? And there's an old house key in the kitchen drawer To a door I can't unlock no more Sometimes I hold that key
What do you do with the sands of time when they carve out lines around your eyes? God bless Willie Nelson. Uh, well, with Jamie's um, I didn't, I'm losing, losing her mind. mind here because oh. that's I'm one sweating. of... I'm sweating. I didn't know that you wrote... Of... I'm losing my mind. <laughs> oh, Jamie. <laughs> that song, holy... Oh, my goodness. That song is oh. so well, great, and Willie did so such much. a good job, and she didn't know that you had written it. I have mm -hmm. put that repeat, 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 driving across the country, that song. Bless I, your I know, heart. I don't know Thank how I didn't you. know that you wrote it. So you know cool. what he what he said to me one time, Jamie. This is a great story. We were at the BMI Awards, and he was getting the Icon Award, and so I had I've met him several times, but I wanted to make sure that my husband I wanted to introduce him to David, and so we were making our way through this crowd, and there was a giant pile of writers just thronged on him, and I sort of just like pulled up, and I came up behind him, and I thought, you know, hopefully he'll you know remember remember me, but you know if he doesn't, I'll introduce myself. And he turned around, and I was just about to say. Mr. Nelson Leslie Satcher, and he was, you know, he's not real tall. And he turned right around and he was right in my eyes and he goes, You Remain is my favorite song I ever recorded. In front of all my friends. And I was like, Where's the tape recorder? Where's the tape recorder? In front I couldn't of my all my friends. Because everybody was just standing there. We were all like, and I was like, thank you, Jesus. It was so great. It was so great. But I was like, where's a tape recorder when you need one? But it was just such a great moment. He was really, that song, I believe, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, you know, Willie, he's he, he's lost some, one of his his sons uh, some years back. And I, I, I imagine that it really means something to him in a different way than it meant to me. And other people who have heard that song, it means something to them. A woman came up to me in a shop one time, and she said, are you Leslie Satcher? And I said, yes. And I was thinking, holy, holy she hopes she's not from the IRS or something. And she goes, <laughs> you know, songwriter nerves. And she right. said, I want to tell you something. She said, my sister walked through two years of breast cancer. And she said, every day she listened to your song, You Remain. And she told me if I ever met you to tell you thank you, that it helped her. And I, I mean, how would you ever think a song would do that for someone? And it's, I always know when a song is recorded by an artist, and I bet you feel this way too, Mary and Jamie, um, and other writers who might be listening. Once a song is recorded by that artist, that song kind of becomes theirs. And you, in a way you got it does, to, yeah. Yes, you got to be a person who, who it, it was in your hands for a few minutes, it passed through your hands, it went to their hands. Mm -hmm. And once it goes from their hands, it goes to the listener's hands. And so it's like, it's a big, it's a, you, if you try to grab a song and keep a hold of it, you would choke it to death. You can't do that. You have to give it away, and it has to go to the right person. And I think with that You Remain song, it means so many different things to different people. And uh, it was a real gift from God, and I'm so thankful for it every day. It's a monster song. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The guitar didn't sound bad on it either. <laughs> it sounds so good. It's just the right It's the right tone. I can't mm -hmm. believe you got nothing going on except plugging it into the board. Plugging That's it incredible. in, baby. Yeah. Yeah, because, and I can't touch the knobs. Davey won't let me touch any of the knobs. He goes, <laughs> do right not touch those are. knobs. And I'm, I'm forbidden from the whammy bar, too, but I am secretly learning it by myself. Every now, oh, every now and then, give it a little tug. Every now and then, I'm starting. I'm learning the, well, I'm learning the whammy bar. <laughs> Y'all will think this is funny. When I got my first electric guitar, I went over to Guitar Center over there in Berry Hill and up here in Nashville. And my producer, who's a really good electric guitar player, he went with me to help me find something. And he goes, let's not start out big. You're just starting. You're just fooling with this thing. Now, let's just get a little cheap. It was just a little cheap. It was like a $100 thing. And it had red, it's red, and it had a whammy bar on it and everything. And so we took it back to the studio over in Burial, and he goes, let me see it for a minute. And I gave it to him, Luke Wooten, that knothead. And he took it from me. He took the whammy bar, screwed it off, put it in his pocket. He goes, you don't need that. Here's your guitar back. <laughs> I was like, that was so rude. He took it away from me. He goes, you don't need that. You can take that. <laughs> Anyways, they, they don't trust girls with whammy bars, man. Oh, well, so you know, bad. that makes me think of Willie. He took away Paul English's drums. When, right. when I got the chance to tour with him, all Paul had left was a snare drum and two brushes. Really? Why? <laughs> just didn't, didn't want didn't nobody want... playing over his words. <laughs> Ooh, I see. Well, there you go. He's getting, he's, I saw him the other night on Austin City Limits, and man, 
he is doing his own thing. He sounds so awesome. And I'm like, how old is he, 82 or something like that now? He's in his I, 80s, I right? Think, I, for sure. I think mid-80s, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, look at him go. He's just you doing know, his thing. He's a hero to all of us, that's oh, for sure. Oh, he is. He is. That's he changed my life sure. more than once. <laughs> same. And Jamie, oh my God, yeah. Same, same, For same. Sure. All hell. Jamie's All Willie hell Nelson Willie. She's a good girl. She's a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jamie, I meant to tell you too, you're singing. Wow. I, I, I heard you in the uh, before we were on live. Oh my gosh, girl, your voice. And then when you sang a while ago, I was like, listen to her go. I'm ordering that record too. I can't wait. <laughs> oh, thanks, it's really Leslie. sounded Thank really you. really great. Thank you, Thank my friend. You. Why don't we do this? You do one, Jamie. I do one, and then let Leslie close the show. You got a few sure. more minutes? Would you mind hanging uh, out? Sir, for 10 I've got. More? I'll sit here till tomorrow if you want me to. <laughs> well, we've right, got we we got a couple of songs that kind of go together, and they're sort of um, pandemic based in a way, grief but faith, and and. Um, uh, you'll know how to end it. You'll know. You, I, your, I will. Your catalog I've got one for is you. so vast. But uh, we'll let you end it. Let's go with Jamie and then All me right. and then you. How about that? And want to thank Perfect. everybody, y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. We're with yes, Leslie Satcher. You. If you, you don't know who our guest is and if you don't know who we are, I'm Mary Gauthier and this is Jamie Harris. All right. You can pick up the guitar there. Yeah, got to get it working. Yeah. Before we do this, I'd like to say we did open up a... Um, online songwriting workshop registration uh, a couple days ago. I've been teaching uh, on Zoom 20 people at a time uh, on Saturdays for about two and a half hours every Saturday for a five week period. We opened up another registration. We're limited it to 20 and we've already got 10. And so it's gonna sell out for sure. But if you wanna write uh, or work with me and help uh, have me help you with your writing, uh, I'm doing that uh, in small groups of 20 online on Zoom. Uh, and this next round will go from April 10th to May 8th on Saturdays. Uh, I think we're going from 11 uh, Central, 11 to 1.30 mm -hmm. Central. So right. um, there's 10 seats left if you want to grab one. They're going to they're gonna go. I know they are. They, they, uh, they always do. So just a heads up on that. And Jamie, take it away. Thank you. You want to do a song we wrote together, right? Yeah. Great. Yeah, this one is a co-write with Jamie and I. We, we, uh, we lost someone uh, that I was very, very close to for a long time. It's my hiking buddy. And when you hike five miles in the Nashville Hills with someone over 15 years, you get to know them. And uh, gosh, I miss her. I still, she passed in, in uh in September and I, October 4th actually, and I, I can't, I still, I can't believe it. So I'm still in shock. And this song is about being in shock after losing someone.
tells us what to say. I don't know what I believe. I just know I have to leave. I walk alone back to my car. I go before the good best start. I have always been this way. We're the only world who can make me stay. Could you be gone? Travel distant lands. May the moon and stars delight you as the daylight dims. Till the morning sun warms your face. Till I see you again May you lay down your struggle Beneath a silver sky Summer rain inside your dreams sing a lullaby. May there be no more sorrow, no more pain. May you sleep inside. Stillness of the night till I see you again. May 
you reunite with family and friends may they walk you home may love embrace you in a dance that never ends Mary, that was beautiful. Jamie, oh, you're you, killing friend. me singing. Oh, just beautiful songs. Beautiful songs. Right back at you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, listen, it's been an honor to be with y'all today, really. And I love you so much. Both of you know that. We, back um, at you. We love you, too. <laughs> after we left Lafayette, David said, can we put them in our pocket and take them home with us? And I said, well, <laughs> <laughs> we could for a little while, but they had worn out, just like all all the kittens do. <laughs> so, <laughs> you guys are just awesome. We, we love you and, and you're making such great soulful music and, and just making your way in this world. And, and that's a good thing. And, and just know that, you know, you've got two people who love you and right outside of Franklin, Tennessee. And if you ever need us, we'll be there in a shot. Davey's got a, He's got a he's got a fast truck. He'll get there as quick as you need him. So he's got a big beautiful truck. Yeah, we, we love that. We love the truck too. We love y'all and the truck. Boy's got a Hemi. He can be there fast. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, congratulations on your new venture. Yeah. Um, we're in. We want to be a part of it. We'll figure out a way to to get Thank on you. over there and write a little vignette with you and some songs yep. to go with it. That sounds incredible. When uh, when they get over here, folks, I'll get a picture of them sitting on this big leather couch over here. So just to prove that that, that I had them over here. So <laughs> when y'all come home, when y'all finally come drifting back to Tennessee, please give us a call. We'll feed you some tacos. We got some margaritas over here. Y'all like we have ways Take of making you stay with friend. us. <laughs> All right. God bless George Strait. God bless Mary Gosheg. God bless you, Jamie Harris. God bless Texas. I still feel 25 Most of the time I still raise a little cane With these girls Honky tonks on city limits And man, I'm still right there in them Singing above the crowd And the noise And sometimes I feel like Jesse James Still trying to make a name Knowing nothing's gonna change What I am Yeah, I was a young troubadour When I wrote in on a song I'll be an old troubadour When I'm gone The truth about a mirror is a dying old mirror, no, it never really tells the whole truth. It don't show us deep inside, it don't read between the lines, and it's really no reflection of my youth. And sometimes I feel like Jesse James.
when I'm gone. Thank you, girls. Love you.